A new poll out of Michigan shows that despite the constant negative press, President Trump and Kamala Harris are statistically tied in the crucial swing state of Michigan. Suffolk University and USA Today put Kamala at 48 and Trump at 45, with RFK Jr. still pulling down a solid 1% since Michigan won't let him off the ballot. The margin of error is 4.4%, meaning that this race is currently tied, which means that events outside the control of candidates could decide the election. Israel could decide the election in a state with a large Muslim voter base. Radical left-wing professor and spoiler candidate Cornell West, with his 0.6% of the vote, could decide the election. Your individual votes, if you live in Michigan, could decide this election. Each side turning out every single voter it can is currently necessary for victory. But it still isn't sufficient. This poll is a reminder that this election, like all elections, ultimately could be decided, very likely will be decided, by an act of God. I'm Michael Knowles. This is The Michael Knowles Show. Welcome back to the show. Did Diddy predict his detainment 20 or 25 years ago? Creepy new footage of Mr. P. Diggity Doodad talking about his parties and the freak offs and all the rest of it uh, comes out. How did so many people turn a blind eye to this for so long? He was talking to the news outlets. He was saying it on TV. We'll get to that in one second, though. But before we get to what Diddy did, we got to get done with debt. Go to donewithdebt.com. You did not vote for this impending recession, but you sure are going to pay for it at the pump, at the grocery store. And with that growing stack of unpaid bills. If you're one of millions of Americans being crushed with financial stress right now, the solution is donewithdebt.com. Unlike some of the other guys, Done With Debt has created new aggressive strategies designed to get you out of debt permanently without bankruptcy or loans. Done With Debt stands between you and bill collectors. They negotiate with your creditors to write off balances, cut interest rates, and stop penalties. They have a plan to put more money in your pocket month one and every month until your debt is gone. Best news is that Done With Debt is accepting new clients right now, but you need to hurry because some of their debt strategies are time sensitive. You do not want to miss out. Let Done With Debt hit the debt reset button for you and make your money yours again. But again, this is time sensitive, so you need to visit donewithdebt.com or call 1 888 322 1054 right now. Chat with one of their debt relief strategists for free. That is donewithdebt.com. Donewithdebt.com. Now, speaking of Israel, which I think is probably the event outside of the control of either candidate that is most likely to disrupt the race in Michigan because the Muslim vote is going to be very important there and Kamala Harris is running as a challenger even though it, she is the, in the incumbent administration and uh, people are going to blame Biden and Harris for whatever happens next in the Israel-Gaza, now Israel-Gaza-Lebanon war. So probably... Israel is the big question mark in all of this, but it's not just America that's concerned about what Israel is, is up to. Uh, Keir Starmer, the new liberal PM of the United Kingdom, is demanding that Hamas release, I think he wanted to say that Hamas should release the hostages. That's not quite what came out of his mouth. I call again for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. The return of the sausages. The hostages. He wants a return of the sausages. Now, he he then said a return of the hostages. It's unclear if he meant to say hostages, but instead said sausages. Or is this like a, a quid pro quo? The Hamas releases the hostages and Israel will release the sausages that it liberated from the Hezbollah members with the pagers and the walkie-talkies. I don't know. Is that a Freudian slip where you say one thing and mean your mother? I'm not quite sure. In any case, the world order is fraying. The war in the Middle East is escalating. It threatens to become not just a major regional conflict. It could set off a, a global conflict. And in the context of all of this, Joe Biden 
is giving his farewell at the United Nations. It did not go well. It went about as well as you could possibly expect that it went. Here is President Biden, remember him, his valedictory for the world stage. I made the preservation of democracy the central cause of my presidency. This summer, I faced a decision whether to seek a second term as president. It was a difficult decision. Being president has been the honor of my life. There's so much more I want to get done. As much as I love the job, I love my country more. I decided after 50 years of public service, it's time for a new generation of leadership to take my nation forward. My fellow leaders, let us never forget Some things are more important than staying in power. It's your people. Some things are more important than staying in power. Like when Chuck Schumer tells you you can't. And and then you you can't run for re-election again. What am I doing here? Where am I? A, A dishonest speech in that. Biden is suggesting that he voluntarily gave up power. He did not. He ran for re-election. He did his best to hold on to the Democratic nomination for president. He engaged in that debate with Trump where Trump beat him so hard that the entire leadership class of the Democrats told Joe he could not go on. And then a statement was issued in his name dropping out of the race while Biden hid in Delaware. He's probably being imprisoned by the Democrat Party leadership at the time. He says, some things are more important. He's looking back at all that he's done, all that legacy. Well, what's the legacy? The proof of the pudding is in the tasting. He's standing there at the UN. Is the world order better now than it was three and a half years ago? Not at all. Everything has gone to hell. Three and a half years ago, President Trump had secured peace in the Middle East through the Abraham Accords. You had a normalization of relations occurring between Saudi Arabia and the state of Israel. You had Iran on the back foot, not getting too aggressive. You had Russia on its back foot, not getting too aggressive. Obviously, uh, President Trump's administration was the only one in 20 years during which Vladimir Putin didn't further invade a foreign country. You did not have a war in Ukraine yet. Biden comes onto the world stage. He starts cozying up to Iran, leads to a huge outbreak of war in the Middle East. And then he literally invites Putin to invade Ukraine. So the world is on fire as Biden leaves because of his administration. And it's not just Republicans who are saying that. Vladimir Zelensky said that. It's pretty clear. It's a a total failure. Of all the many failures of the Biden administration, and there are too many to name in one episode of this show, this is probably the biggest. It's it's the most glaring. The world was relatively at peace before he took office. It's now at war, increasingly at war, uh, after, after he prepared to leave. Not good news. But he said, look, he's made democracy the central piece of his administration. And so that's why after the people of the Democrat Party nominated him, voted for him and nominated for him to be their their pick in 2024, he was pushed out. There was a palace coup and some lady who never got a single vote while she was running for president is now the nominee. What a total joke. The whole thing is in collapse. Now, speaking of society falling apart, this is the most disturbing story I've seen in at least a few days. I mentioned this on the show when it first was proposed, and you may have read some stories about it. We are hurtling into a brave new world in which people will die in suicide pods. There there is a company manufacturing suicide pods that you climb into, you close the door, You flood the chamber by pressing a button with nitrogen gas, and you die. That's the product. That's how it works. And then you're locked in there for a little bit to make sure you're good and dead. Then, I guess it opens up, and they can take your corpse out. And you will pay for the privilege to kill yourself in these pods. Well, it's no longer just a proposal. It's no longer just science fiction. The first successful suicide in a sarcopod has occurred... Uh, This was a U.S. woman. This is an American woman, 64 years old, uh, who flew to Switzerland to have this done. Now, the operators of this pod have been detained, thankfully. Uh, The woman killed herself because she says she was suffering from a chronic condition. The the condition is just being reported as immune compromise. 
whatever that is, whatever immune compromise is, that's the justification for this woman killing herself at 64. Now, it raises this question. If the guys were arrested, is, is assisted suicide not legal in Switzerland? No, it is. For a second, I thought, wow, props to Switzerland. That's great. It, it, you know, you, you might be a little lax on certain laws, but you're, you're not allowing your citizens to kill themselves. That's great. Uh, but no, it is legal in Switzerland. However, the Swiss interior minister said that the Sarko suicide pod might not be legal in two respects. On the one hand, she says, it does not fulfill the demands of the product safety law and as such must not be brought into circulation. On the other hand, the corresponding use of nitrogen is not compatible with the article on purpose in the chemicals law. Okay, so it's maybe technically illegal, but in principle, it's not illegal. And in a lot of countries, suicide is no longer. It, it, suicide was always illegal, but, but increasingly it is being decriminalized, legalized, and encouraged in countries throughout the West. And it's coming here to America. It's already here in certain parts of the country like Oregon, where younger and younger people are choosing to kill themselves, or the elderly are being pressured to kill themselves, or they're being convinced that they're a burden on their family, and so out of despair they're killing themselves. I mean, it's just as horrific as possible. But the question that we have to answer is, why is suicide wrong? It's going to keep spreading. If you think it isn't coming to a city near you, it is in America. And these little, these laws and, and these, these regulations and these real just instincts that people know this is wrong, and, but they can't quite explain why it's wrong. That's not going to suffice. We have to explain why suicide is wrong. And the reason suicide is wrong is that it's contrary to self-preservation. It is good and normal and just to preserve yourself. Suicide is contrary to self-preservation. That's why it violates the natural law. But that's probably not very satisfying, is it? You could come up with another argument. You could say, one reason suicide is bad is that it divides the human person into two. It makes the human person uh, a, a contradiction, uh, opposed to his very self, so that in suicide, the, the individual is both the victim and the perpetrator. This is a, a little bit more of a poetic understanding of why suicide is wrong, but that's probably not really satisfying either. And so the scientists and the sophists and the calculators and the economists are going to ask, well, what's the proof? Show me the, the proof with statistics and I don't know, whatever other nonsense people demand in our scientific age. They're going to say, prove to me that suicide is wrong. And the simple answer is you can't prove a first principle. You can't prove a premise. You can't prove an axiom. C.S. Lewis addressed this in the book Abolition of Man, and he refers to these premises, these axioms, as the Tao. But he says you could also just call it the natural law or the first principles. Or, but it's, you know, it's, it's wrong to commit murder. Prove to me that it's wrong to commit murder. Prove to, uh, you should honor your mother and father. Prove to me why you should honor your mother and father. You, you really can't. You can make some good arguments, but you really ultimately can't. You can't prove your premises. But this isn't, a, this isn't a flaw of ethics. This is just, this is really how all knowledge works, not just ethical thinking, but all knowledge. Mathematics works this way. In mathematics, there are principles. I think I mentioned this on the show yesterday. I mentioned it somewhere yesterday. In mathematics, there, there are premises like uh, A equals A or A plus B equals B plus A. You can't prove those things. They're just the premises that you start with. And then from there, you build out to all of mathematics. Well, the same goes for ethical thinking. They're just things that we, we take for granted. That's how we begin. And by accepting those principles, we're able to think in a really accurate way, in a really illustrative way about all sorts of other moral and ethical questions. But you, you can't prove it. You, you just have to kind of assume these things. We just know these to be true because the natural law is written on every human heart. And we all know it's true, but we, we deny it in this silly age we deny it to ourselves, to our own peril. And I, I don't just mean to our own peril in an abstract way. I mean, if we deny the natural law, which is inscribed on every human heart, we're, we're just going to start killing ourselves. And that, in fact, is already happening. Now, one way to take care of yourself, your tastes, and your body is to check out Good Ranchers. Go to goodranchers.com slash Knowles. As we approach the upcoming election, let me remind you your voice is not just heard at the ballot box every four years. You cast a vote every single day with your dollar, which is why you got to go to Good Ranchers and not just go to Good Ranchers and get the best meat out there. 
you got to get the Knowles box at Good Ranchers. You got to vote for me over all their other boxes. Mine has all those beautiful, delicious meats that you're going to want to eat the Michael Knowles diet. I Sometimes I talk about, I post pictures of the meals that sweet little Elisa makes me. So many of them. I, can't, I guess I can't technically say all of the meals. Some of the meals are vegetarian, but a huge portion of those meals are using Good Ranchers meat, which is the best meat that you're going to get. It's American meat. doesn't have all sorts of artificial crap injected into them. The The quality is just absolutely out of this world. As a child of the Mezzogiorno, as a son of Italian-American uh, ancestors, I can tell you I take my meat very seriously. This stuff is absolutely the best, and the prices are out of this world. And you'll get the presidential promo right now. It's worth over $1,200 for four years, all sorts of extra bonuses, plus an additional 25% off your first box. What more do you need? Go to goodranchers.com slash Knowles. Choose my subscription box especially, but you can really choose any. Use code Knowles at checkout, and you will get America's Meat delivered. Speaking of institutional suicide, crazy story. I think I might be the one who broke it. At the very least, I, I... called it to the public attention yesterday on X, and I'm really pleased to see the reaction to this story. It is, I think, the most absurd instance of the transgender movement invading women's spaces yet. And there have been some pretty absurd examples of this. Uh, But in this case, I think it's even crazier. There's a group that's been around for a very long time in America, It's called the Daughters of the American Revolution. It's a genealogical society. Men who think that they're women are now attempting to join the Daughters of the American Revolution. That part's not crazy because, well, it's crazy, but it's it's not shocking because the pro-trans movement has been trying to invade all sorts of women's spaces, their bathrooms, their sports teams, everywhere. But this one's, this one's crazy because the Daughters of the American Revolution, at least at the leadership level, is accepting it and encouraging it. Now, the Daughters of the American Revolution takes biology pretty seriously. It's a genealogical organization. It's the descendants of, of patriots who fought in the American Revolution. Genealogy is, uh, uh, comes from the same root word as genetics. Talking about your genes, man. Chromosomes, you know? <laughs> and uh, the, the DAR takes biology so seriously that if you are an adopted child of a family that can trace lineage back to the American Revolution, you can't join. No knock on you, but you just you don't have the, the blood and the DNA coming from the patriots, so sorry, you can't join the group. But if you're a dude who thinks that he's a chick, you can join the group, according to leadership. It's not as though, by the way, there isn't a group that men who can trace their lineage back can join. In fact, I know this very well because my family is in it. (laughs) I I have, I think, two ancestors who fought in the American Revolution, one of whom died of his wounds uh, from Bunker Hill early on, another one who fought from 1775 all the way through the end of the war, um, 1783, he he left the service, was discharged at Newburgh. General Washington was, was there. Uh, so my grandfather was the president of his local chapter. My father joined. Whenever I finish my paperwork, I'll join the organization. It's a great thing. If the fellas want to join a fun genealogical group, they're more than welcome to join SAR. But it's not about history. It's not about preserving American traditions, certainly not preserving traditions, these people. It's about invading any and all spaces that are dedicated to women. So why are the, why are the gals going along with this? I don't, because they don't want to be accused of being exclusive, because they don't want to be accused of being discriminatory. But you know what? If you're a private membership club that is defined by uh, sex, then you have to be exclusive and discriminatory. You're saying half of the people can't join. And, and the, the, Lines that we've heard from DAR leadership are really confusing here. They say, they're pretending, first of all, that these transvestites were always allowed in the group. That's obviously not true. Uh, For most of DAR's history, no one even considered that transgenderism was a category of being. Then they say, well, we have to let the transvestites in because of anti-discrimination law. But then they also remind members it's a private club, so they're not really bound by anti-discrimination law. And then the reason I even bring this up is... Multiple members have reached out to the Daily Wire because they feel that they're not allowed 
to complain about this. They're not allowed to push back from the leadership. And so if you are a descendant of an American revolutionary patriot, you should email dar33club at gmail.com. Certainly if you're a member of DAR. And you should tell the leadership you don't want this. It is, really bugs me. Not just because I will, whenever I finish my paperwork, I'll join SAR. And that's been important to my family. But because I think this is the, the really exemplary a case of the transgender agenda. It's certainly up there. This is a group devoted to history and tradition and preserving the norms of our society. That is, of course, why it is being targeted. You, you remember I interviewed a trans widow, woman Tracy Shannon, whose husband was, was a, a, a complete degenerate and, you know, was a... a transvestite and all the rest of it. And we had this very long interview. You can check it out in the Michael and series. So you can only imagine how it felt when he was a six years older, his dad decides he's going to become a woman and he goes and gets giant breast implants and a nose job and grows his hair out long. And he's hanging his bras all around his trashy apartment for my son to see and whenever he would hug my son he'd rub his breast up against him people don't think about what this is like for the boys they don't think about what that's like at all i mean dads have a certain feeling when you give them a hug and now their dad was soft and his enormous breast would rub up against them and that made them really uncomfortable i found out that woman's husband is one of the men trying to invade DAR. No surprise at all. If DAR, I hope the DAR leadership is watching this. I hope all of these leaders of women's organizations, be it basketball leagues or <laughs> I, don't, I don't sororities, anything. I hope you're all listening. If the Daughters of the American Revolution starts to admit men, the Daughters of the American Revolution has not been expanded. The Daughters of the American Revolution has been abolished. The definition of the Daughters of the American Revolution is that it is a group in which men are not welcome. It's for daughters, and daughters and sons are different. You can't expand things endlessly. When you expand things beyond their limits, you abolish that thing. Now, speaking of limits... When you want to place all sorts of sports bets, you ought to check out Prize Picks. Download the Prize Picks app. Use code Knowles. Let me tell you about Prize Picks, America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. It's the easiest, most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Now, here's an offer that will make your head spin. One. Caleb Williams passing yard gets you one win on prize picks every week in September. That's right. Only one yard gets you an automatic win every football weekend this month. Four weeks of free dubs. What do you think about that? Don't miss this deal because it's gone when September ends. But wait, there's more. Right now, you can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. Here's something I love. Prize picks is the only real money daily fantasy platform with an injury insurance policy. If your player leaves in the first half and doesn't return, your picks are still live. This is the kind of common sense protection that we conservatives can appreciate. Now, you know me, I'm not the biggest athlete in the world, but Mr. Ben Davies, he is a real athlete himself and he loves fantasy sports, and especially football, and uh, he can absolutely attest to the brilliance of this app. So you can download the Prize Picks app today. Use code Knowles, K-N-O-W-L-E-S, to get $50 instantly when you play five bucks. That's code Knowles on Prize Picks to get 50 bucks instantly when you play five bucks. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It is guaranteed. Prize Picks, run your game. Speaking of women being persecuted, Penn has just suspended law professor Amy Wax. You may have, this is a saga that's been going on for months and months now. Amy Wax is a conservative professor who's been called all sorts of things, racist, defensive, discriminatory, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we, we usually hear the, the weak, 
piddling pleas for academic freedom from people on on the right and the left, which previously advocated for academic freedom back when it served their purposes to upend standards and ensconce themselves in power. Now you don't see any defenses of academic freedom from the left. Well, they finally got her. They finally suspended a tenured law professor at Penn for one year at half pay for what? For supposedly racist and offensive comments. So I figured I'd take a little look at some of these comments, the ones that are being reported in the media. What did she say? According to Penn, Professor Wax has a history of making sweeping and derogatory generalizations about groups by race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, and immigration status. Wax, quote, on numerous occasions in and out of the classroom, made discriminatory and disparaging statements targeting specific racial, ethnic, and other groups with which many students identify. Okay, so give me some examples. Here, ABC News gives me an example. Wax in an April 2022 Fox News interview, disparaged Indian Americans and said, on some level, their country is an SHIT hole. Okay. You remember Trump made this comment about how we don't want to just totally open up our borders to uh, SHIT hole countries. (laughs) I guess we don't want our countries to become like that, which is just obviously true. So I, I imagine Amy Wax is reacting to that phrase. And she, she says, well, some, some of these places really are. SHIT holes. Now, look how it's reported. She disparaged Indian Americans by saying, on some level, their country is an SHIT hole. Hold on. I thought they were Indian Americans. If they're Indian Americans, then are you you misinterpreting Professor Wax to to think that SHIT hole refers to America? Well, the left has been saying that for (laughs) centuries at this point. So, you're... The Indians have left India. They've come to America. Presumably, they've done that for a reason. Probably, in a lot of cases, they, they basically would agree with Amy Wax here. But no, we're not. Amy Wax is not allowed to suggest that there is a reason that people might leave their countries and come to America. What's the next one? In 2021, Wax told Brown University professor Glenn Lowry on his podcast that as long as most Asians support Democrats and help to advance their positions, I think the United States is better off with fewer Asians and less Asian immigration. Okay, so she's saying Asians are overwhelmingly likely to vote for Democrats. So when we're deciding who should come into the country, we obviously have to have some limits. Even the left, in principle, doesn't doesn't usually pretend that borders should be totally open. So she's saying, yeah, we should reduce the number of people who come here and vote for Democrats. What's wrong with that exactly? Can someone explain to me what's wrong with that? I can't, I don't quite get it. If it were... Uh, if she were talking about people who come here and are more likely to vote for Republicans, and, th- and that's why we need to limit their immigration, well, she would, she would be celebrated. In fact, that's exactly what Barack Obama did when he called for m- mass migration from everywhere in Latin America, except for Cuba. He, he ended wet foot, dry foot, the policy that allowed Cubans who made it across the perilous shark-infested waters on, on rafts and on doors to, to make it to the shores of Florida. He said, nope, you got to go back. Why? Because the Cubans vote Republican. That's why. Venezuelans tend not to vote Republican. So yeah, give us your Venezuelans, please. Cubans though, sorry, you got to go. We don't want any Cubans anymore. Obama said the same thing Amy Wax said. But Obama will be given all sorts of awards and accolades and Amy Wax will be suspended despite her tenure for it. In 2022, according to this reporting... Show me the lie in anything this woman said. The last example is the most egregious by far. If you hold the view of marriage that has been held statistically by every single person ever since the dawn of man, if you hold the view of marriage that Barack Obama held as president in 2011, you are a bigot who needs to be stripped of your job and your your livelihood despite holding tenure, according to the libs in 2024. Amy Wax did nothing wrong. And if they can take her out, as apparently they've been able to, I, I don't hold out much hope for the other handful of conservatives in academia. Now, speaking of unfair attacks on conservative scholars, this one takes the cake. And my friend Kevin Roberts who is the head of the Heritage Foundation, has come under fire 
because he's uh, good at his job. <laughs> he's, he is wielding the uh, very established, very important think tank, the Heritage Foundation, to effective political ends. Uh, so the libs really don't like that. They want, they want their conservative think tanks to be writing useless white papers that never go anywhere. When, as long as the right-wing think tanks are doing that, the libs are happy. But the moment that the right-wing think tanks actually have an effect on politics and personnel and policy, ooh, yikes, that, now we got to take them out. So they've said all sorts of crazy stuff about Project 2025 and the Heritage Foundation and everything. But this is my favorite one, according to The Guardian. Project 2025 mastermind allegedly told colleagues he killed a dog with a shovel. <laughs> Revealed. Former colleagues claim Kevin Roberts told them he killed a neighbor's pit bull around 2004. I don't know, if a pit bull were threatening my kids or something, you know, trying to gobble up my little toddlers, uh, then I, I think it would be rather justified to, you know, smack the thing with a shovel or something. That uh, would, would make me support Kevin Roberts even more. But uh, the, the silliest part of the story is it's just apparently totally made up. In a statement to The Guardian, they include this, Roberts denied ever killing a dog with a shovel. He did not answer questions about why several people say he told them that he had. By the way, the people that they quote are apparently all liberal professors <laughs> and uh, people that he worked with when Kevin was in universities uh, who didn't like him, who, who say in the article uh, that, uh, you know, he, he, was, he was the odd man out being a conservative in academia. So uh, Kevin's statement says, this is a patently untrue and baseless story backed by zero evidence. That's correct. In 2004, a neighbor's chained pit bull attempted to jump a fence into my backyard as I was gardening with my young daughter. Thankfully, the owner arrived in time to restrain the animal before it could get loose and attack us. Okay. W what is this all about? Pitbull comes running at me and my toddler daughter. Pitbull's going down, okay? <laughs> it's really nothing against pitbulls. It's just how they're bred, but they eat toddlers, and sometimes you got to... I know this is controversial in our day and age. Human toddlers matter more than pitbulls. They matter more than dogs. They matter more than cats. I like dogs and cats. I don't think Haitians should be cooking them or doing voodoo with them in Ohio. I think we ought to have appropriate care for animals and love God's creation and be good stewards of the environment and, you know, all the rest of it, but... Today, the, the left, uh, you know, elevates little dogs and they treat dogs like children and they t t treat children like garbage. They, they treat children like diseases to be exterminated through abortion and uh, experimented on and sold like commodities. So they're, they're really wrong about all of this. But in this case, the story appears to be totally made up anyway. There's no evidence that any of this happened. So what does it mean? It means they were afraid of Kevin Roberts. This is the best endorsement I could possibly imagine of Kevin Roberts as the head of the Heritage Foundation. Can you name other heads of the Heritage Foundation? I actually can name a few because I, I am in the conservative movement and I've been around politics for a long time. But even you, if you're listening to this show right now or you're watching it right now, you're probably pretty tuned into politics. Can you name other heads of the Heritage Foundation? Probably not. Why can you name this guy? Because the left has done its best to malign him and defame him. And why have they done that? The same reason that they come up with all sorts of nonsense about Trump and they launch all sorts of hoaxes and they cook up fake documents with Democrats and then they justify killing the man multiple times in a single election year. They're afraid of him. And why are they afraid of him? Because for the first time in a long time, conservatives appear to have a plan of action that threatens the hegemony of the liberal establishment. That's why. Simple as. Now, turning away from people who are defamed as disreputable to actually allegedly disreputable people, P. Diddy. Did P. Diddy predict his own detainment, his own arrest over the freakout parties? A clip has just reemerged from 1999 which was a great year to party, as some of you may remember. Prince made that very, very clear. But back in 1999, Mr. Diddy, then known as Puff Daddy, talked about the hottest ticket in town, which we'll get to in one second. First, though, Matt Walsh's blockbuster, Am I Racist?, is the biggest political documentary opening in 20 years. 
It's still a top 10 box office hit and the biggest documentary of the year, boasting a 98% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. The only way to see Am I Racist is in theaters right now. But there was a movie that started it all. What is a woman? The groundbreaking documentary that became Matt Walsh's first cultural phenomenon, What is a Woman?, tackles one of the most debated questions of our time, and Walsh's journey to find an answer has captivated audience across the world. The best part? You can stream it now. You don't have to go to the theater. You can stream it right now on Daily Wire Plus. Not a Daily Wire Plus member? Well, go to dailywire.com slash subscribe to join the fight today. Use code DW30 for 30% off your new Daily Wire Plus membership today. My favorite comment yesterday is from Jack Madness 91 who says, Trump officially has a bounty poster now. I want one signed. That is badass. Fact check, true. P. Diddy, 1999, says that his parties are the hottest in town, so hot they might get him arrested. Your parties are the hottest ticket around. They won't even give me a permit for the parties, man. They don't want me to throw the parties no more. But we, we ain't gonna stop. We gonna keep on having fun, bringing people together from all walks of life. You gonna hear about my party. They're gonna be shutting them down. They're gonna probably be arresting me, doing all types of crazy things just because we wanna have a good time. You know, whenever you bring up a different element into people's environment, things that broaden people's horizon, people get intimidated. There's a lot of people out there that feel intimidated by it. It ain't nothing but, but, but breaking down racial barriers, breaking down generation barriers. People from all walks of life. Ron Perlman talking to Jay-Z, Jay-Z talking to, you know what I'm saying? It just goes on and on, you know, it's just, it's just like people from all walks of life connecting and getting together. They are connecting. They're connecting in all sorts of ways, disordered ways. Uh, some of the allegations about Puff Daddy's freakout parties, which, and maybe the freakout parties were a little different than these parties, maybe the freakout parties evolved over time, but the parties in question uh, involved thousands of bottles of lubricant and baby oil and hookers and drugs and IV fluids after the days-long bacchanals involving uppers and orgies. And it's just, it's a little different than the way Puff Daddy describes at least his early parties. Now, a little bit later on, I think it was around 2002, Puff Daddy goes a little, a little bit more into detail, gives us a little bit more color about some of those parties. We need um, alcohols. Right. Alcohols. Right. Not just one alcohol. Alcohols. Right, just Quarrels. different blend. You need Blends. the ladies, you need the booze. You need um, some water. <laughs> <laughs> For watering plants? No. What? No, no, I don't know if guys have noticed this, like a lot of ladies drink water at parties. They right. just, you know, so you have, if you don't have what they need, they're gonna leave. Right. Gotta right. keep them there. Right. You need, you need locks on the doors. <laughs> Okay, this is sounding kind of dangerous now. It's a little kinky, but yeah, you know, yeah. rock with me, but just right. check it out. You need um, a lot of heat. A lot heat. of heat. Yeah. Heat. You mean that physically the place has to be hot? You don't have no air conditioning. No air conditioning. No. Why is that? Heat affects the alcohol, and it also affects, like, um, you know, everybody gets a little bit more comfortable and loose. Builds up a nice little sweat. That just sounds disgusting. What are you doing? <laughs> Depends on the way you look at it. Depends. Oh, people yeah. start getting kind of, it gets kind of sexy. Is yeah. that what you're saying? You got to lock the doors. Yeah, if you don't have water for them, they're going to leave. So you got to make sure they stay. You got to put some locks on those doors. It's a little kinky, but you got to get them all really hot. Hot and bothered and sweaty. And okay, now we're getting a little bit darker. Because initially, P. Diddy's uh, alleged um, depraved, <laughs> drug-fueled uh, human trafficking orgies, alleged. Uh, initially, we were told it's just about getting people together, man, you know. It's about getting, breaking down barriers. Well, it is about, I guess it is about breaking down barriers. That's, that's always how the left markets its revolutionary uh, plans. It's about breaking down barriers, tearing down the standards that keep us apart. It's about inclusion. We need to let men join the daughters of the American Revolution. We need to let men change in the public uh, girls' room at the swimming pool. We need to, you know, it's just about inclusion. And, and just getting to know each other and getting together, you know? And it's about getting a little bit drunk, too. It'll, it'll reduce your inhibitions. It's about getting a little drunk. It's about turning the heat up so that you feel literally like you're in hell. And then it's about making, it's about putting locks on doors, by the way. It's about, because you might want to try to get out, but we got to break down those barriers. We got to, we got to be inclusive. And maybe if you ever feel like you don't want to be, we're, well, you're going to, 
try turning that doorknob. It ain't gonna work. Um, it's a little kinky. <laughs> hey, but open your mind to kinkiness, isn't it? Isn't it great? Yeah. And then we're gonna get a thousand bottles of lubricant and a ton of hookers and drugs. And then when you're at the point of exhaustion or possibly even death, then we'll stick you with an IV so that you can keep going a few days later. Ugh. That got pretty dark. Kind of disgusting, huh? That is, that is how this always goes. Notice the reality always gets progressively darker. You think, I mean, the, the, the most lurid example is transgenderism. Just think about, imagine if you were the opposite sex. Imagine, imagine all the people, imagine if you were the opposite sex. And then what's the reality of it? They start chopping up your body, sawing off parts of your forearm, giving you chemicals that sterilize you and that lead you to an early death. There's an irony to all of this. The irony is, and, and Puff Daddy explains it perfectly, the more liberated you get, the more enslaved you get. When we're talking about this kind of liberation, it's, just, it's all about breaking down barriers, getting liberated, man. That's why we're going to lock the door. We got to lock the door to make you get liberated. We're going to, the more liberated you get, the more, the less conscious you become because you're getting so drunk on all that, all those alcohols and all those other drugs that allegedly were at the parties later on. The more liberated you get, the, the more like a beast you become because you just become flesh, you know, bumping uglies up together. There's no, you become much less rational, much less conscious. You're just kind of going with the flow and with your instinct, man. So you, the, ironically, and this again, this comes from C.S. Lewis and Abolition of Man. The, the, the more that you, the more that you break free from limits, well, ultimately, you're going to free yourself from humanity. You're going to lose the things that make you distinctively human. When you finally break through all the strictures upon you, what do you have? You have the freedom to kill yourself, I guess. Freedom to treat yourself like an animal and the, pro and the freedom to kill yourself slowly with drugs and disease or quickly with the suicide pod in Switzerland. Now, speaking of weird sex stuff, Ryan Routh, the alleged would-be assassin, who uh, the second would-be assassin uh, against Trump, the first one obviously was killed in Pennsylvania after he failed. The second one had the, the muzzle of his gun sticking through Trump's golf course. Allegedly, I have to say allegedly a hundred times. Well, his son has just been arrested on child porn charges. Orrin Routh is facing federal charges for the possession of child pornography after investigators searched his home in North Carolina. And the search was in connection to an investigation totally unrelated to child pornography and child exploitation. They were searching his home because his dad allegedly tried to murder President Trump. And just this guy's luck, he had a ton of child pornography on his computer, allegedly. Talk about rotten luck. Talk about the worst assassin ever. Talk about, I feel, you know, I, I actually pity people who get arrested for all sorts of things. I pity their victims, probably more, but I pity them too, because they're slaves to, to sin and they've destroyed their lives. And so you, you do kind of feel bad. You feel bad for a serial killer in a way. But... This guy now could go to prison for a long time, and he might not have ever been caught. Police might not have ever come to his door, except that his dad allegedly tried to murder the president. So what does this tell us politically? What do we conclude from this? We conclude that there is no such thing as a private sin. This is one of the big mistakes that I think people make in, in modern politics on the left and the right. We pretend that there is, there's what we do publicly, but then there's private sin. So what the left does is they actually want to make, they, they want to celebrate private sin. They want, you know, perverts to be twerking in leather garments in front of children on Main Street during their parades. So they, they want to take private sin and pretend it's not sin and make it public. But even many people on the right will say, well, look, don't judge what a man does in his bedroom. Don't judge what a man does in his private life, whether it's, I don't know, as a matter of business or is in, in his family or, I don't know, whatever, on his computer in this case. It's, it's his private life is his private life and public life is public life. But there's, there's really no such thing as private sin because a sin is a violation and the violation will affect somebody else. It will, at the very least, affect your behavior and 
you're part of society, so your behavior could have a deleterious effect on other people. And also, you can't, you can't have a society of people enthralled to vice and terrible things. The whole society is hooked on vice and just degenerate behavior, and then expect to have a good society. Your constitution is not going to save you in that case. Your, your beautiful public buildings are not going to save you. If all the people are rotten, then they, they, they're not going to just confine their rottenness to their homes, but, but suddenly take on virtue when they're in public. They're just, if you got a, if you got a bunch of rotten people, you're going to have a rotten country. It's not that complicated. There is no member block today. You'll notice I'm here at PragerU because I was filming some episodes of my show, the book club here. And uh, because Professor Jacob's rig in our hotel room was no good. So we're filming here at the Michael Knowles show at PragerU, which means I have no iPad. I got nothing. Well, I have, I guess I have my personal iPad, but I'm not logged in. So anyway, forget about it. We will see you back in Nashville tomorrow. I'm Michael Knowles. This is the Michael Knowles show. See you then. The stage is set. The stakes are sky high. Senator Vance. Governor Waltz. Face off. But who will land the knockout punch? Don't watch the debate alone. Experience it with the most trusted names in conservative media. Daily Wire Backstage brings you unfiltered commentary, fighting wit, and expert analysis you won't get anywhere else. Join Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh, Michael Knowles, Andrew Clavin, and Jeremy Boring for a debate night you'll never forget. Daily Wire Backstage, Tuesday, October 1st, 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central, only on Daily Wire Plus.